Good afternoon, everyone, or well, good morning, uh, depending where you are in the world. My name is Marco Frasina. I'm one of the Game Developer Relations Managers at GameMaker, and welcome to our webinar of how to teach game design with GameMaker. Um, today, we're essentially going to look at the different methods of teaching GameMaker at different stages as students progress through their education. So to the agenda, we'll start with a brief overview of GameMaker and then look at the approaches to teaching game design. This will include some feedback from teachers who took part in a survey we did back in November 2020. We'll then look at the different approaches taken for different student age groups. And for each age group, we'll move on to the challenges brought about by COVID and how to adjust for home learning. Well, hopefully we should see the back of COVID very shortly. Um, we'll also to look at the, our approach to privacy and license, licensing towards the end of the presentation, including um, the licensing support and um, how we've been providing to all schools um, irrespective of COVID. And at the end, we'll finish up with a Q&A and also more importantly on how to get your free license. So before we get to the educator uh, resources, I'd like to provide a brief overview of GameMaker. Um, and I think it's, its origin story is quite important to how it how it came about to be today. But GameMaker was um, first developed in 1999 for use in education by a professor called Mark Overmars, uh, who was a professor at Utrecht University in the Netherlands. And it was uh, a method by um, Dr. Overmars to essentially provide an easy to learn 2D game making tool for his students at the time. Um, and and since uh, back in the day, 2D was quite important for learning um, because it removed much of the complexity of so progress um, in this course. Um, so through the years, that's kind of been built on and it's, um, it's now been used. We now have a language within the engine called GML Vigil, uh, GML standing for Game Maker Language Visual. Um, and it's essentially like a system for no code development. So students firstly understand the fundamental building blocks of the logic involved in game making, and then they can progress to coding when they are ready. And this allows them to progress a little bit more seamlessly, seamlessly without uh, hitting such a such a big wall in their progress. Um, it's a custom language. It's very very similar to JavaScript, um, but it's based on C and it's designed to be easy to use. The game design and to be simple to be pick up, picked up along the way. Game Maker includes a number of editors um, within its uh, within its IDE, the integrated uh, developer environment, um, where you can edit images, sprites, objects, and rooms. And it also now includes a uh, sequences animation tool. Um, there's plenty of free teacher resources that teach the fundamentals of coding and help guide students to build their own game. Uh, step by step, and we have a really large supported and active community. I'm not sure if any of you have had a look at some of the forums, but game maker developers as a whole are, are very forthcoming. And um, usually if, if you ask for um, help in one of the forums, you usually get it quite quickly. Um, but it's also uh, an engine now which has got a bit of cred credibility in the market. We have about um, over 1500 big studios across the globe that use uh, Game Maker to build games uh, for their studios, um, to publish games within the app stores or on Steam or on Switch. Um, and students can see hundreds of real games made with Game Maker uh, with yeah, millions of players playing them worldwide. Um, within that list, there is a, a link, Big Studio Credibility, and that link there will take you to a, a showcase which contains lots of great games all made with Game Maker. And some of them are even award-winning games too. So teaching game design. Um, this was a questionnaire that we sent out to teachers uh, last year. And we essentially asked the question, how effective are game design lessons at teaching the following? And you can see the positive results on, on this slide. And a lot of this tees up to how we structured our teaching course, um, our teaching program with Game Maker, or education program even, excuse me. Um, so the responses are quite consistent with the answers we received to a previous survey um, a, a little earlier than this one, which asked a similar question. And 
more than 75% of respondents rated the effectiveness of game maker at learning engagement and individual conference and planning is somewhat effective or, or better. We also are often asked what age game maker is taught at. And as you can see from the graph, there is a range of ages, but the most important uh, ages, which we'll cover today and, and the approaches we, we have for these age groups are broadly at 12 to 14, 15 to 16 and 17 plus. So being 15, 16 and 17 plus being at the peak and from 12, that's kind of where it slowly ramps up to those age groups. So here's a graph showing how teachers approach the teaching of game design from a survey of educators, educators who use Game Maker. So we have make game step by step using video, teaching led, um, a project with objectives for students, class discussion, game jams, and other other means, other directions. And as you can see, the teaching of Game Maker is very hands on. So it suits very much suits what we call kinesthetic learners. And this is probably why we hear that students who struggle to engage in other areas of the curriculum are more motivated to engage with, with game maker, game design lessons. Um, I was recently talking to one of our teachers who provides alternative provision to children who have behavioral difficulties and who can't be accommodated in mainstream education. And they told me that um, the Space Bottle Bubbles video tutorial, which is one of the video tutorials um, in the uh, learning section of our website, uh, which is also part of the free education tools are at the at the right standard for this type of student and there are three approaches to teaching that i'm going to cover in this presentation so first in blue is make a game step by step using video this is a, an approach that solely relies on video tutorials where users build and extend games starting from known knowledge using the gml visual language language and then progress into making these games using gml code and this is more appropriate in home learning situations, out of school camps or clubs where there's no formal framework needed for learning code. Um, the students are learning the skills in a more hands-on way. So educators may need to provide some structure to what they've learned afterwards using the educated classroom materials. This requires less, essentially less educator input. Then in orange, make a game step-by-step -step with the teaching leading. Um, in this approach, the educator provides guidance on the teaching of coding to fulfill a school curriculum, and this is reinforced with step-by-step -step tutorials, and it comes with an assessment structure with homework. Um, this is the approach taken by our educator resources and will require the educator to run online tutorials to go through the slides. And finally, in green, we have the approach of set a project with objectives for students to interpret. And this is generally the approach we, we see taken with those aged between 15 and 16. This is actually the most popular approach and is used in more advanced curricula where students are required to show a bit of creativity and practical implementation of programming. So for this approach, I'll show you the resources that we can provide guidance and inspiration from. This graph shows how teachers evaluate the progress being made by students. Um, our free tutorials include fully do documented teacher and peer evaluation criteria. Assessing progress can be a, a bit of a difficult part of home learning, but Game Maker enables easy sharing of games so educators can check on progress and make sure students are on the right track. So, how educators ben benefit from Game Maker? Um, in, in 2020, we did a survey and we got some great feedback from educators on how using game design has aided the education process of their school. And here's some excerpts. Um, the kids are happier in class. There aren't behavior problems like in other classes. Games require creatives and tech teams, teams to work together with a common goal to solve. While they build games, they also build friendships, learn to overcome hardships and create something meaningful. The students have learned to solve um, complex or abstract problems by themselves. And the content provides a sufficient challenge and helps develop persistence and attention to detail. And finally, uh, enabling some students who are otherwise disengaged from the curriculum to re-engage. So what about the students? 
what do they get out of it? What do they enjoy the most? And here's some responses submitted by their teachers. Um, definitely the end where they finally tried their own game, even it was the, if it was the most simple game in the world. Learning to overcome challenges and have a, a working program. The students love to show their parents what they have made by themselves. They're very proud if they get ideas done to improve their skills. There's also a feeling of accomplishment, which is very important. Um, and originality. So this is quite an interesting one, just being able to create an original game and then watch their peers play the game is a, um, gives a, a very kind of high feeling of satisfaction, um, maybe a bit of an ego boost. Uh, creating games and making rapid progress in short span of time is a very nice uh, transferable skill. And thinking up new games, so brainstorming is a, a, a very um, interesting skill to work on uh, for students and, uh, and very comp complement to game design as a whole. But fundamentally, seeing their eyes take uh, ideas take shape, so things that they have in, in their head and getting them out on screen. So the benefits of making games include achieving a lot of elements of the curric curriculum. Um, and here we have space bubbles. So to look at some of the different styles of teaching um, at age 12 to 14, school curriculums are generally focused on teaching students the fundamentals of coding and giving them engaging ways to put those newly learned skills into practice. So to this end, we created space bubbles. Um, this slide essentially lists everything that's included in the materials. Space Bubbles is a, a GML, visual project-based scheme of work, where students work one project over the course of eight one-hour lessons, with 30 minutes being spent on learning coding, and 30 minutes being spent on making the Space Bubbles game. Over those lessons, students are taught how to program by recreating their own version of the game Space Bubbles using video tutorials. This is aimed at children between 12 to 14, but can be used for older and younger, depending on the skill level. And it is a very really good place to start. And it was developed by a guy called Terry Watts, who was a teacher and was formerly a, a game designer. Um, what else would I like to say about this? I'd say in, in a home learning environment, the lessons can be taught using Zoom and the students can progress using the video tutorials. They're able to export their game, uh, submit their game for evaluation by the teacher and complete their self-assessment forms. Um, each lesson has its own starter project that contains everything as it should be at the end of the previous lesson. So if a student gets stuck on a specific lesson, they won't fall, fall behind as they can move on to the next one. The curriculum topics for this age group covers um, include programming key concepts and principles, uh, sequencing, uh, sequencing, selection statements and iteration, and modeling the state and behavior of real world problems and physical systems. So for example, one of the homework exercises is to find the correct order of a set of listed steps in order to successfully make a hot chocolate. Um, it also contains information on teacher review, self-review, and peer review. Moving now to video tutorials, which don't require a teacher to lead. Um, this is Space Rocks, the first of our consumer tutorials where students can learn on their own. This game is based on the classic Asteroids game and was created for beginner level with many of the same mechanics as Space Bubbles. It covers both GML visual and GML code. So you can make a game in GML visual and then remake it in GML code to better understand how the logic translates. This is an official tutorial made by one of our community educators uh, uh, a body by the name of Friendly Con Cosmonaut. So it also helps to introduce a different teaching style and includes an intro to Game Maker itself. The focus of this is to retain engagement through quick wins. Uh, within the first few minutes, your students will have created a ship and got it moving. And then they are just layering on additional game elements and logic. Space Mods builds on Space Rocks. It also has GML visual and GML code versions. This additional content can also support students who need more help with the Space Bubbles extension and challenge tasks. It contains 12 additional videos, approximately over two hours, explaining how to use and, in, and implement such features such as power-ups, enemy ships, so a bit of AI logic, a camera, 
um, parallax or layered backgrounds to give 3D perspectives to 2D within 2D environments and visual effects, uh, including particles and screen shakes. Um, and to the bottom right of the screen there is a really nice comment here from a user who felt that they were able to start making their own modification to their games once they had completed some of the space mod videos. Testament to some of the progress that could be made just from following the tutorial. Uh, to continue, Breakthrough is a brick breaker game. It's taught both for both GML visual and GML code. So students have the opportunity to develop the game with either method. Around half of all projects being worked on in GameMaker are in GML visual. So there's no need to rush to GML code. You or your students can move on once you feel prepared to do so. This is a totally different style of game, but shares fundamental concepts with the tutorials I've mentioned so far, and the teaching is still at a beginner level. Firejump is one of our latest tutorials. It is a full game tutorial for GML Vigil that introduces the basics of Game Maker to create your own infinite platformer game. It comes as a four part tutorial series, and do check it out after the webinar. Um, it's probably one of my most impressive tutorial. Um, you can click the link on this slide for more information. And on the site, there is a link to play the web version of the game as well. So moving on to the 15 to 16 age bracket, here we see the school curriculum focusing more on the creative applications of coding with GameMaker. With project-based tutorials, you can set a theme and see how your students interpret it then judge it based on a marking scheme. The scheme could, for example, include the following, uh, interpretation of the theme, uh, complexity or functionality use, uh, playability, coding practice, or even creativity. And here are links to some resources for tools, artwork, audio, uh, that can be used as the basis for game creation. Um, the Global Game Jam is also an interesting um, yearly event. Uh, it's a link at the bottom of the slide, um, definitely noteworthy as they run essentially the world's largest game jam each year where um, participants all over the world are tasked to build a game um, within, uh, I believe it's a 48 hour window. We also have blog articles that can provide uh, a lot of inspiration. They're from our own team and uh, also sometimes from pro developers as well who, who uh, work in conjunction with some of the articles that we produce. Uh, and these can fit in quite well with the Space Bubbles and Space Rocks tutorials as well. They co cover a wide variety of topics from planning, creating game mechanics, how to's, getting your game finished, um, how to make your code neat, and, and plenty of other subjects as well dedicated to game development. There is also no shortage of guides and inspiration on YouTube. Um, so we have lots of uh, game maker developers within the community who upload various tutorials on how to build games or um, construct various pieces of logic of games within uh, the game maker IDE. Uh, and they're catered for a range of skill levels. Um, yeah, and they cover many aspects of, of game making. Uh, I've provided a, a, a link here just just a sample of games and tutorials that can be found easily on YouTube. All game maker features and functionality are fully documented with examples in our online manual. Uh, the bottom left is a link at the bottom of the slide um, to our manual. And one of the problems with students aged 15, 16 who are home learning is that group learning and projects can be a bit more difficult to achieve. So to assist with this, we have an official tools video tutorials that are accessible through our very own YouTube channel. And these take you through all the tools and editors demonstrating how they work. If you're looking for a more expansive set of game tutorials, I would recommend this developer who is, who, yeah, in this set of video tutorials would explain how to make a platformer game. Um, it starts at a very beginner level using game maker language. And we have a blog post that also links to the developer's YouTube uh, channel where they explain a lot of development concepts and practical examples as well. Uh, yeah, this is a guy called uh, Sean Spaulding. He has a platformer tutorial series. Um, they are uh, a developer I, I mentioned 
in one of the previous slides, um, he has a 27 part tutorial that essentially guides users all the way from a blank project to having a working uh, platformer game akin to uh, a Super Mario Brothers. Um, and it's a complete game with lots of effects and even a, a menu system as well, uh, definitely worth checking out. We have new education materials that we just that we released um, this last year. This is a more detailed uh, GML code based game design tutorial um, for artists and people starting to learn game design aimed at college and university level. And in this series, you're guided on how to make a game called Little Town, an adventure playing game created by a university lecturer and a game designer, Ben Rivers. Um, ben teaches uh, a game design faculty at um, a faculty called the OCAD in Ontario. Um, and these materials include a detailed booklet and video tutorials which students can use to make the game in eight one hour lessons. And there are about nine hours of videos in total. We also provide an instructor guide, which is a, a just over a 300 page PDF that has set a set of step by step tutorials and a guide on how to teach it and how to even evaluate uh, progress while going through it. Little Town will utilize more advanced functionality within Game Maker, um, including our sequences animation functionality. And all our licenses provided have access to sequences. For older students, um, particularly aged above 16, they can use our community forums as a way to engage with our community for assistance with any problems that they may have with their projects and also to discuss their ideas. Um, and yeah, it's a great, also a great way to, to ask for help or, or even to give help um, as a developer. Um, and it's a, a, a very, very highly recommended starting point um, for anybody on a game development journey as well. So going to the licensing options, we have three types of licenses available, and these can be purchased through Studica. First of all, there's the educator, the educator license, which provides access to desktop export, um, which is in either a Windows, Mac, or a Linux client machine. Uh, the Educator Plus, which provides access to desktop and web exports, and Achiever, which provides access to desktop, web, mobile, and now uh, even things like the PlayStation 4, and also Xbox, Xbox One as well. And there are one to two year options available for all these licensing options. The seats for these licenses are concurrent, so they can be used for multiple classes, and GameMaker can be used on PC and a Mac not yet on a Chromebook. But due to the overwhelming demand from these webinars, we do have a version in development for Chromebook as an FYI. So over to, yeah, we, we covered a little bit about COVID. So as you can see from this slide, which shows the result of our survey in November, 2020, um, at that time, only 5% of teachers were unaffected by COVID. And as a consequence, we have provided support to our users throughout the COVID pandemic. And currently until end of June, 2022, all C licenses can be used by five students simultaneously. So 30 seats that would usually have been used in a computer lab can be used simultaneously by 150 students learning at home. So hopefully we won't need to extend beyond uh, June, but we will look at this nearer the time to see if uh, measures need to be extended again. Excuse me, end of August. So privacy in education, um, this is a really important topic for us. Um, the teacher usually acts as our seat manager and they receive one perpetual education desktop license that they can use to investigate game maker and understand the required setup of the software. Um, and the seats are entirely anonymous. So only, the only information needed for a seat are a username that you would set yourself and passwords that you would also set. No personally identifiable information is collected on seat users. Um, there is more information in, in our privacy policy in a specific section on our approach to education if you follow the link on this slide to the bottom left. Um, we are also approved for use by educationframework.com as well. So 
yeah, yeah, as a special offer for attendees uh, and also to making it to this to the end of the presentation, you're eligible to receive a free teacher license and Christy will send you the link um, to this shortly after this webinar. And I think that wraps it up. Do share any questions if um, if you have any. Marco, um, as a teacher with all these support materials, how long would you say it would take to just kind of get to the point where you'd be a, feel confident teaching it? Like, how long do you think that would take? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would suggest uh, that would mirror however long you'd feel comfortable for, for guiding through one of our tutorials. Um, and to see how you how you um, kind of synthesize and digest the material from there. Um, and we are very prescriptive in our um, instructions um, that are you know, complement to those tutorials as well. So as long as you uh, as long as you grasp a, a kind of a fundamental understanding of a game maker through one of those set pathways, then we're pretty confident that you'd be able to then use that as a method to learn uh, this curriculum to your students from there. Awesome. And then I think this one you already kind of answered, but can the seats also be used for after school activities? And because they're concurrent license, I'm assuming the answer is yes. That's a fundamental yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and let me just check. I think that's the end of the questions. OK, great. Well, I believe uh, the audience should just look out for an email from, from Christy. And it will include uh, instructions for requesting your free educator license and also a recording of this webinar. As well. And uh, yeah, if anybody have any questions or would like to request a quote or speak with a dedicated educational representative, please contact Studica and they'll be very happy to assist you. Great. Thank and you thank so you much, much, Marco. For coming on the webinar. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank you for everyone attending. I'll get that email out to you hopefully tomorrow. Have a great day.